All right, I'm gonna make a video here about how to make a color splash. And I'm gonna use the website Photopea to make it. So I'm gonna make a image black and white and just one part of the image is gonna have color. And so if you search photo P, you can type it into Google and it'll come up. It's the first one on there. The nice thing is that you don't have to download anything. You don't have to sign up for anything. This is the first screen you come to. And I'm gonna click on open from computer. I'm gonna open an image from my computer. So I'm searching through, I'm gonna to go to my desktop and I'm gonna search through and find well, where I have saved a photograph. So I'm gonna open that one. I'll just click on it and click open. So there it is in the program. And right over here is my layers. And I have one layer, background layer right now. I'm gonna right click right here and I'm gonna say duplicate layer. Now I have my background layer and I also have a copy of that background layer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the top layer black and white and the bottom one is gonna stay in color. So I'm gonna go up to here and I'm gonna go up to image and down to adjustments. And then I'm gonna go to black and white. When I click on there, it brings up this window, asks if I wanna change anything, any adjustments. I'm just gonna say, okay. So now you can see in the little thumbnail preview over here that I have a black and white version on top of a colored version. So the black and white one is blocking it. If I click this eyeball icon, it will turn off the visibility on the black and white one and show the layer underneath, which is the colored version. I can turn that back on. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mask away part of the black and white layer to show the color layer underneath. To do that, I'm gonna add a layer mask to the black and white one. So right here is the icon. It says add raster mask. I'm gonna click on there. When I did that, it added this other rectangle, the mask part of this layer. And that's what we want. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my paintbrush, which is a little bit hidden for me because of how the screen was set up. But here's the paintbrush. If you leave your cursor over it, it says brush tool. So I'm gonna click on there. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure I have the color black selected. Your toolbar may be a little bit different. This may be down at the bottom, but here's the color picker and you can click on there. It opens up this color picker and you wanna select black. So here's black, I'm gonna click on that and say, okay. And Next thing I'm gonna do is, you can see my cursor, it does have a paintbrush, but it's really, really small. So I'm gonna change the size of that. Up here, there's a little menu, and I can increase the size of my brush. You can see it change right there. I could go even bigger if I wanted to. And that's where you could adjust the size. The other thing to know in this menu is the hardness level. And that's just the crispness of your brush. So I'm going to click once. And it makes a nice crisp circle the size of my brush. If I wanted to fade those edges and kind of feather them in and make it a little more smooth transition between the two, I can do that. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go edit, step backwards. It's going to undo my last step. And I'm gonna go back to that part here and I'm gonna really lower the hardness to show you guys the difference between it. Sure, we'll put it at 11. Then I'll click with the same size brush, click once, and you can see how it really feathered that edges. The change between the two is a lot more gradual. So playing with that hardness level is a good idea to just try a couple different Hardness levels, see what you like. For different images, it'll probably work a little bit different. 
But from here, I can go through and I could start to add color to my image. And I would probably zoom in pretty close to mine. And I would change the brush size a few different times and, and try to get the details of things as well. So let's get my brush tool again. And if you end up going someplace you didn't mean to, you didn't mean to go all the way out there, you can always do the edit step backwards. That would be a way to fix that. Another thing you can do is you could switch your color picker and you could change it from black to then be white as well. So I'm going to go to my color picker, change it to white, say OK. And now it's going to put it back. So white is going to bring it back and black is going to take it away. In this way, I could touch things up. And when I'm ready to switch it back to black, I can do that. Go back to my color picker switch it back to black, and then I could keep going and take things away. And if you want to get really detailed, you can change your brush size and get in as much detail as you want. Each image is going to be a little bit different. And so let me do a little bit more on this one. You could probably spend a little bit more time than I am kind of rushing through it. And once you got it to the point you like, you can save your image. So you can go up to file and you could save it as a PSD, but that's going to make it a Photoshop document. I would suggest going to export, export as, and a PNG is a great file type. A JPEG is also going to work really well. So I'm going to save it as a JPEG. It brings up this window to save things. And it's just a zoomed in part there to see a detail. And I can hit save right here. You'll see it go to my downloads here. And from there, I could put it to my drive, save it somewhere I want turn it in for my project, put it in a Google presentation. And I think that's going to do it for this video on how to make a color splash.